Welcome to Warblog. Today we're going to look at the Elgab plane. And I'm just going to get straight into playing it. Um, I quite like the map. There's a bit of depth to it. Um, but essentially, I think the, th the thing with this that makes it sort of slightly different is that it's not heavy on the counters and I sort of did that deliberately um, I sort of tried to make it relatively minimalistic to make up for some of these sort of heavy counter mixes of some of the other games um, we've, also, we've got the M4 highway there which seems to go all the way sort of up towards Turkey really where along the um, where the where the Kurds are so um, and that obviously goes up and joins the M5 somewhere but anyway so I'm just going to sort of jump into it but let me just have a quick look at the at the lines I've added this one in there but really it's more like this and you sort of got to get it to something like that so you've got to take out all of this space here um, and to sort of achieve that Well, that's a, well, basically, there's two two battle groups, and that's just what I put in there. I haven't really thought it through. Um, we've got this, these guys here, who sort of really just meant to sort of give a presence on this front, and these guys here to sort of put a bit of pressure on there. But basically, I figured that the whole idea here would be that these units would sort of go along these roads. Um, now. Essentially, you've got one unit in each place. Now, this guy was say I put that extra extra sort of unit or objective there to sort of balance it up a little. Um, but you've got one in there. Uh, you've got one there. Got one there with some engineers. One there. There's nothing in there apart from some rockets. You've got one there with some air defence. You've got some rockets there, and you've got nothing there. So you sort of got not enough to cover everything. And so there's only really one unit at a time. Now you could probably bring these units forward, possibly, but that's sort of up to you, really, as as well, up to you as the sort of the rebel player. Um, but the whole idea is really there's only sort of one unit at, at, at each time, so it shouldn't be that difficult to do. So let's just see how it sort of works out. I think the key thing really is going to be doing one thing at a time. Now we can't move artillery and fire it. So what do I want to do with that artillery? I can move it forward maybe, or I can just fire it. One, two, three, four. I think I don't know really. I'm going to bring my air power down on this because there's engineers in there. Oh, well, they got a whack. Okay. I didn't envisage these ones being used, I just put them in there to represent the line. But you can do what you want, I guess. Let's see what these artillery units do here.
Well, the engineers took the brunt of just about everything there, really. Okay, so let's move everything up a little. So we can get in there next. Here, we'll leave these there. And here we will take out this objective. Right, so we're going to attack with the battle groups that we've got. I don't know what this will be like, but I'm hoping it will be a 7 to 1. Yes, but only just, depending on a 2 with 14. And this should easily be. Okay, I should have thought that through. I have to attack now because. Okay. So we push them right back and we'll probably get a 7 to 1 on this as well. Yep. So that was a good first attack. And the thing that I like about that is that it satisfies the, um, the the potential um oh the, the potential argument that there's too many counters i'm often aware of that um but i don't really care i, I like lots of counters but the thing is that would be a sort of quite a good simulation of what what is happening if this was to happen if they were defending in this town i can't read it from there. Uh, and, and we had a, a battle group with some armor with some motorized with some mechanized and it was just this one unit not 20 units all stacked up and things like that and and that that, that would be it and so and one of the reasons i did put the units a long while ago onto the irregulars onto sort of fairly significant multipliers in villages etc was to make them weak outside but very defendable inside any built up area and I think they were on two and that wasn't because it's a village because the village is only 10% so they were basically being doubled up but it was only one so really we need more than one but as they sort of fall back they they're, they're their factors should, should multiply. So here we've got the same thing, basically. But they've got the engineers in there, so... This might only be like a 3 or 4 to 1. But that was enough. And... Learning from last time, oh, he hasn't got any more movement. Nor has he. Let's just check that. No. Okay, now we don't really want. He's going to be on two, isn't he? He's going to be defending on two. So we should be able to get a 3 to 1. We should be able to get 6.6. .6. This is 2. 
but I don't want to do that attack because I want to do the attack sort of in a more structured manner. But I, I like that the way that's sort of worked out there, really. So I'm not going to push with these ones. So we end the turn. So what does the Hangout Tower of Sham units want to do? Well, these are just holding. So we've got this unit here. He, he could he could either hold or he could retreat. Now he could attack this unit and get a one to one. But I think they're just going to hold. We do have these guys. I wonder if they can shoot anything from there. No. He's supposed to just hold. So we've got some, got some rockets and air defense. And he's, both of these units are quite tired. Okay, so we can hit it from there. The question is, do we leave him there to recover a little bit? Or do we move him there and stack this unit on top? I think we will actually. Because this gives us that. And then we can try and take out a tank. 0.7. So first blood to the Hayat uh, Sham units there on this armoured unit. Now we've got rockets. Now, got to remember that rockets are not very good against armoured vehicles anymore. Easy to forget. That's why I don't like those rules. I don't like anything that's unintuitive because I think if anyone was playing this, they think, oh, I'll show my rockets on these tanks. And, and after a while, they realize that they weren't doing any damage because it's not the sort of thing you really notice, especially when <laughs> it doesn't work properly. I mean, it does work properly, but it says you've got this much damage, but you don't actually. I have to correct that. So, do I want to bring these rockets forward? I don't know. I can't think really. Um, yeah. So we can bring maybe two lots of rockets against this motorized unit. So there's a real punch going on here, so really, or not. <laughs> so we're going to leave everything else sort of as it is. He will recover at least. And so the lesson we learned there is that we've got some damage on this armoured unit, and we've got some damage on this motorized unit. The lesson we learned there is that they can inflict that sort of damage on a turn by turn basis, which gives us a clock. It gives us a sort of you know period of time. I mean, for example, we can't just sit here maneuvering for ten turns because we wouldn't have anything left. Um, so really we've got to take things out as quickly as possible and we've also got to take out choice targets. So for example what the Hayatao Sham unit? I'm going to call them HTS because I can never say that. I'm going to call. I'm going to. I did actually think about it. So I'm going to call it HTS or, or, or the Rebels or something. Um, but basically, what what HTS didn't think about was they didn't think of move ahead because I can now move to there, knock that out, then move into there, and basically take out these these rockets. But they're not on. Or are they? Let's find out. So we can push this back. Easy peasy. We haven't used our. Yep, and we route it. 
and then we move in here and what's this going to end up like oh wasn't expecting that Right. I'll bring the air power down on that. I wasn't thinking properly there. With the attack on the rockets, I sort of assumed that they would be down to point two defense, and I just, I think I haven't done it. I haven't adjusted the rules for rockets. I've done it for artillery, but not rockets. Okay, well, let's move this artillery unit up as far as we can. Okay, that's as far as it can get. Okay, an exchange, but we've routed that unit. And this should be a one to one again, two to one exchange. I've never seen, <laughs> I've never seen, I've never, well, I've not seen anything like this. I mean, I've, I would never imagine that an armored company and an uh, and, and a mechanized company would have a problem against a rocket unit. They must have sort of some sort of incredibly good defensive position, uh, and these people are suffering from premature stupidity. <laughs> so, uh, because they've done damage, you know, they've lost one. They've lost, you know, the armored unit is on one point seven. Well, that doesn't look good. Okay, now we've positioned our artillery. Can we do something with this? Can we get there? Well, I think we should really be concentrating on doing something there. And I want to do this. Just at least push the front there. Eliminated. So he's got six movement from there. And this armoured unit, which I completely forgot about, is still there. So we might be able to whiz all the way along this road and take out that rocket unit. 
We've still got that, but he'll defend fairly readily. If we move him up, that'll be a 3 to 1. But what I want to do is this. Okay, so we pushed him back. I like the way this game's going, but I went there to affect his his exit zone of control. Otherwise, he would have gone to the southwest one. He would have gone there. Otherwise, if I was there. There would have been no zone of control, and I don't want him going there. At the moment, he can go there, 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 or there. So it's 25% chance of him going there. I'd rather he went there. Which he did. That was nice. I think we've had a pretty good go of it, really. I like the way it's sort of working actually, the dynamics is quite appealing, obviously the HTS is not going to win, but it's sort of how much damage can we take, yeah 1.7 on the armour there, nothing there, nothing there, 1 on that, 1.8 on that, okay. Did I use my air power? I must have. It's not there. The HTS turn. Now they've got to watch out for things like losing these rockets. We don't want to lose the rockets. These guys are being pounded. But we've got this anti. We've got these guys. And they've been hit. Point eight. I'm going to go for it. It's not going to do a lot of damage, but it's the equivalent of pinning him down, and I can do it twice. So that's point three, which gave him not a lot. What, what was he on? He was on point eight, so we gave him yeah about ten percent really. Point eight. up to 1.75 so that's 0.375 on that one and they're two reasonable results actually knocking them up to 1.5 the reason being because I want to try and attack it'll only be a one to one but an exchange so we've pushed that Armoured unit up to 2.5 depressions, which you know I think is significant. It's sort of enough. It, it's enough to um, 
to say, well, you know, the, the Syrians didn't get it free. Um, you know, I mean, if you can destroy one armoured unit, that would be a, almost a victory to HTS. That's why I considered focusing on this. But I, I wanted to sort of, I didn't want him going over there because I th thought it would decentralise him. But, you know, so if we were to add that damage 2.5 onto that, Up, up to four, you know, we, we split, but we, we've done damage to two units now. Um, the question is, can we survive and can we counter attack onto there? Is it worth it? I mean, it'll still be only be a one to one. I think I'm going to pull back. These two units are just holding. I mean, I can't move anything else, so that's that. Right, well, Syrians want to use their air power to good effect somewhere. And they might as well attack that, because there's two units in the stack. Okay. Two point three five. I want to try and take out this anti tank unit, but I don't want to do it with tanks, so I'm trying to put these two onto that. He is gonna to have to reposition himself, but we'll consider that in a bit. We'll tentatively just push these units up like that. We really need to think about these units. And I could just move them north. But I think in the first instance here, What I'm going to do is this. That will at least direct him either there, there, or there. Oh, I've eliminated him. That was good. And hopefully, we should just be able to push these rockets out. Yep, and once pushed out, we can chase them. Yep. So what we've got, really, is a walkover, really. So much so that we can afford to push onto this unit. And here.
this is working out as I sort of planned. So you might be sort of thinking, gosh, it's not a challenge at all or anything like that. Well, when I read the article, it doesn't it didn't give the impression that there was a major battle. It just gave the impression that they cleared the area, and this is what we're sort of doing, really. I mean, we've cleared the area. Um, there isn't really significant resistance. Fowler's morale. So there's nothing. Well, there's these two units that are keeping that line. And these. Let's just assume we've moved everything now. Which we have. These units are now going to basically run away. Because what we want to do with them at the very least, in some way, is so they're going to fall back. Try and maintain a line there now. But I'm going to leave it at that because essentially all these Syrians want to do now. Just take all of these places. I'm not going to do it all, just as a sort of a general insight. No, we've got something in every location, and we've got our artillery all in there, and that's that really. And they would essentially try to reform their line. Like that. And that's it. So I, I, I think that went quite well. I think the, the issue would be how much damage can you do for the Syrian army, you know, to, to prevent that. I mean, I could have fallen back earlier and maybe consolidated. I could have utilized these two units on the side. I could have brought this unit down a bit further. You know, there could have been other things to do, um, but I deliberately sort of kept it sort of as as it, as it should do. The the one thing I didn't do in there, which I never do really, is pay any attention to defending along higher lines. I mean, you get a plus ten. You know, if I defended there and was attacked from there, the defender would have got plus ten percent bonus. And then I didn't do that. I didn't think about that. Um, I like this map though. It gives uh, again I made it all up I don't know how things are but I, I give it a little bit of a dip there really I mean this is the the Algab plain um, but the colors the colors look quite good but I'm just not quite happy with that really but I'll leave it that and I'll uh, speak to you later cheerio